Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be learning to use column sums, often also referred to as chimney sums, for subtraction. Now it's really important to have a good understanding of how to do this for addition first because that's kind of your bedrock that you're going to build upon. So if you haven't watched the video on using column sums for adding, make sure you go back and do that first. But if you have, let's have a wee look at how to use it for subtraction. Now as before, the most important thing with chimney sums, or certainly one of the most important things uh, with chimney sums or column sums, is that we line up our columns really well. So we need tens and we need units. I can see 79 here, which is seven tens and nine units. I can see 43 here. That is four tens and three units. But in this case, we are subtracting. So this is the correct layout for all column sums. We need to line up our columns like with like. Units on top of units, tens on top of tens. And that needs to be absolutely perfect. If your columns are squint or they don't line up properly, you will go wrong. So layout, absolutely essential. So as the learning intention suggests, we're going to be doing some subtraction. Take away, essentially. And what we do for column sums is we have the top number and we're taking away the bottom number from it. So this sum here is 9 take away 3. Different ways you could do this. You could start with 9 in your head and count back 3. You could look at the difference between them. You could use a counting on strategy. Start at 3 and count up to 9. Both of those will give you the same answer. And the answer that it gives you is 6. So 9 take away 3 is 6. Next up, probably getting the idea now, we've done our units, always start with the column furthest to the right, but we're now moving on to our tens, we work left. So it is 7 take away 4, always top take away the bottom. So 7 take away 4, well that's 3. And there we have our answer, 36. Another example then, and this time we have a three digit sum. So we have hundreds, tens, and units, and again, essential that we line up like with like. So seven hundred, eight tens, three units, and five hundreds, two tens, nine units. Equal sign, and there's our minus. Now, this is where we encounter our first challenge. It is always the top number, take away the bottom number. But in this case, the top number is smaller. I have three. One, two, three. There's three lines. Can I take away nine? Absolutely not. That's impossible. We can't do it. So what we need to do is we need to find a way of making this three bigger so that we can do it. So what we need to do is we're going to need to exchange. Again, also often referred to as carrying. So we're going to exchange, but instead of passing things up and putting them on the shelf like we did with adding, we would often put things on the shelf like that, instead we're going to be borrowing down the way here. We're going to be passing or exchanging down the way. So our three is not big enough. Well, what I want to do, I want to make it bigger than nine. I want to turn it into a 13, but I can't just do that. I can't just magic 10 out of nowhere. I need to make it 10 bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the column beside it here. I'm going to go to the 8 here, the 10s. And I'm going to borrow from it. It's going to get scored out. It's not 8 anymore. It is now 7 10s. And it's going to very generously pass down to the units column there. So we have taken a 10 from here and moved it to there. Now the maths is somewhat easier. We have 13 take away 9. Well, that's much more doable. That's 4. Now we have to remember that this is no longer an 8. It is now a 7. So our sum now is 7 take away 2. 7 take away 2 is 5. And lastly, we move on to our hundreds column. And it's 7 take away 5, which is 2. Now, a really important habit to get into for all column sums is that once you're done, you have a quick look at your answer 
to just see whether it makes sense, whether it's in the right sort of ballpark. So looking at this example here, I can see that I have 700, actually nearly 800, um, and I'm taking away 500. So what I'll ask myself is, if I have 700 and I'm taking away 500, roughly what 100 range would I expect my answer to be in? I'd be expecting around 200. If it was 800 take away 500, I'd be expecting around 300. So really I'm expecting between 200 and 300 as an answer. And what do you know? I have between 200 and 300 as an answer. So what we had to do to solve this problem here, we had to exchange down the way. We had to take a 10 from there and use it to make our unit bigger because it was too small. Here is a similar example. So we'll have our hundreds, our tens and our units and it's 913 take away 257. Now, once again, we have three take away seven. If I've only got three, I can't take away seven. I need to make this three bigger somehow. To do that, I'm going to go to the column next to it. We sometimes talk about it like going to the house next door to borrow something. So we go to the house next door and we ask if we can borrow a 10. Now, in this case, there's now no 10s in that column. The one becomes a zero. And very generously, that 10 passes into the units column. So once again, in this column, we have 13. And this is a sum that we can now do. 13 take away 7, that's 6. But here we encounter another problem. I've got 0 here. Can I take away 5? Obviously not. So what I'm going to have to do is, once again, I'm going to have to exchange. I'm going to have to go not to the tens column this time because I'm already in it I'm going to have to go to the hundreds column and it is going to very kindly lend us a hundred for ten tens so that nine hundred is going to go down to eight hundred and our zero tens now becomes ten tens and now this is a manageable sum ten take away five five last up then nice easy one eight take away two six and so we get our answer, 656. One final example then, and this one gives us a bit of a curveball because we have a zero in the middle of our top number. Let's see how this works out. We have our hundreds, our tens, and our units. 901 and 437. And it's subtraction. Okay. Always starting with the units, every single time. One take away seven, we can't do. However, we can't borrow from the tens. It's empty. So we're going to have to go all the way here. But that presents a bit of a problem. This is the hundreds column. I cannot shove a hundred into the units column. What that would look like is I now have... 101 units and if I take away 7 from that we're just going to end up in a whole load of mess so we cannot pass down to the units you are only allowed to pass down one column at a time so what we're going to do we're going to go to our hundreds and it's going to generously pass one of its hundreds along but it's only going to pass it to the tens so columns are only allowed to pass to the one beside them so we now have eight hundreds, but in this column we've now got ten tens. Unfortunately, that doesn't help our little unit out here. We've still only got one unit. So the next thing we have to do is these ten tens, they're going to generously pass one of the tens along to our unit. And so it now becomes a nine. So you can see there's a lot of scoring out here. We had to score out here and pass down to here. Then we had to score out here and pass down to here. We've had to basically pass it along the line. So it's gradually bounced along the line like so. But at last, we're down at the units and we've got a manageable sum. We've got 11 take away 7. Well, we can do that. That's 4. And rather pleasantly, now that we've done that, the rest of the sums are all manageable too. 9 take away 3. That's 6. And 8 take away 4, that 
that's 4. And so we get our answer, 464. Once again, before we finish up, really important to have a quick look just to make sure our answer makes sense. In this case, I have 900, very close to 900, and I'm taking away 400 and a bit, 437. So looking at this roughly, if I had 900 and I'm taking away 400, I should have around 500. Well, I'm taking away more than 400 in this case, so I should have less than 500. And what do you know? I have 464. So I know that at the very least my answer is in the right ballpark. So always, always, always have a quick check, just a mental check, and think, does that answer look approximately right? Finally then, here are some examples for you to work through in your own time. So if you can, I'd like you to pause the video just now, work through these examples, and when you're ready, you can unpause the video. And I'm going to reveal the answers in five, four, three, two, one. And there we have it, guys. So that's it. We've learned in this video to use column sums for subtraction, and we've explored how to exchange whenever we need to. Cheers, guys.